Michael McIntyre. Glorious! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you well? Yes. How's it going? Every layer. Are you well at the top? Yes. Marvellous! I must uh, say, ladies and gentlemen, I don't normally walk like this. This is my show business walk. <laughs> I didn't even know I had this walk until just now when I walked out. And I can't seem to stop. It's so showbiz, I might take it into my real life. I can see myself in the supermarket with this walk. Do we need cheese? I don't know. Come on, follow me to the next aisle. <laughs> Who's phoning radio stations, ladies and gentlemen, to warn of traffic jams? Do we trust these people? They used to just have the travel news where they would tell us news of travel, that's their job. Now we've got people chipping in with their own little updates. You listen to the radio and they go, we've just had a call from Barry. He says it's chock-a-block at Junction 4 on the M1. <laughs> Thanks for your call, Barry. If anybody else has any travel news, call our travel hotline. Who the hell is Barry? <laughs> Who in their right mind gets stuck in traffic and just goes, quick, give me the phone, I must warn the others. <laughs> Hello, is that the radio? It's Barry. It's too late for me. <laughs> Save as many as you can. I'm at Junction 4. Please hurry. I can see people joining every second from Slip Road. They know nothing of the chaos that lies ahead. Tell my wife I love her. I'm running out of battery. <laughs> I can't stop walking. How showbiz am I? The lorries with their signs. How am I driving? How am I driving? The first time I saw that, I expected to drive past and see some bloke with no arms. <laughs> I thought you had to call the number and guess. I don't know. Is there somebody else in the car with you? <laughs> Something to do with mirrors? I like it. Well driven. That's the other one. Well driven. Is this going well, the driving? I thought the whole point of these numbers, if you're driving badly, you can phone the number and complain about the performance of the driver. So shouldn't it say, badly driven? But it doesn't. It says, well driven. Are they expecting compliments? Is this the idea? People calling up going, I'm so sorry to bother you, I just felt I had to call. <laughs> it's just that what you did at that last junction, junction seven, absolutely amazing. <laughs> you kept two chevrons apart, you never wavered. <laughs> Your braking distances were unbelievable, and what you did at that last roundabout had the children in the back applauding well driven. <laughs> There's no business in your... <laughs> lovely, lovely. I've just had a baby, that's my biggest news and my biggest achievement. How do you feel about that, Royal Variety? Yeah. I'm a fertile man. It's not easy making a baby. It's not even easy naming a baby. It's very difficult. I went through every name. I think the worst name, this is the only thing I know for a fact, the worst name for a child is Aaron. Aaron is the first name in the baby name book. How lazy do your parents have to be just to get the book and go, Aaron, should we do Aaron? I like the name Aaron. That's good. Let's go to the pub. Should we go to the pub? Fifteen months, ladies and gentlemen, it took fifteen months to get my wife pregnant. I say months because it's a cyclic thing. You have to try every month for a baby. That, that's how it works. And at the end of every month, my wife would say to me, now go to Boots and get the test. Go and get the test from Boots. I'm like, why? What are you talking about? Don't argue with me. You know how badly I want this baby. But I want the baby too, but why don't we just wait and see if it grows within you? And I think that's the best and the cheapest of our options. <laughs> Just go to Boots and get the test. It's £13.99, ladies and gentlemen. I had to get it every month. I could have got broadband. That's what really hurt. <laughs> There's a Boots own one for £8.99. What's the difference? Does the Boots one just go, maybe? <laughs> maybe you should have spent a bit more money! <laughs> Chip and Pin, how's that going? We're coping? It's been about nine months now. They gave us about a year and a half when they showed us it's going to arrive. Soon it will arrive. They were preparing us for it. They basically gave us 18 months, ladies and gentlemen, to learn four numbers. <laughs> and then on the last day of signing, they said, it's it now. No more signing, only chip and pin. They said on the news, it's going to be chaos at the tills. They expected that many idiots to be going, but I haven't revised. <laughs> I've been very busy. I actually thought it was a fantastic way to cull from our society the stupidest people within it. <laughs> If you can't remember four numbers, now you can't buy food. <laughs> no 
are going to die of starvation. Just people in Tesco going 7 4. That's all I got. Please, can I have half of my food? Can I have a banana? Do I cash back? I don't know. Isn't that one of the hardest questions in your life? Doesn't matter how busy you are, how bright you are. Do you want cash back? Uh, uh, yes, no, I don't know. 20 pounds, no pounds. I came here for food. I didn't expect this human cash machine at the end. You don't go to the cash point. Do you need milk? Yes, no, I don't know. One pint, no pints, I don't know. You're confusing me. I had an agenda, a list indeed. Pomp and ceremony. Are we feeling the pomp and ceremony, ladies and gentlemen? Are we feeling the pomp and ceremony? Yeah. Are we feeling the pomp? Yeah. Are we feeling the ceremony? Yeah. Do you have any idea what the difference is? No. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> there should be one word for it. I love words that go together. Pomp and ceremony. You don't say pomp without ceremony. Nooks and crannies. <laughs> People never say nooks without crannies. People don't go, look, we'll search the whole place, we'll split up. You take the nooks, I'll take the crannies. <laughs> Are you insane? Bits and bobs. You don't get bits without bobs. You can't isolate a bob and go, that is a bob, that is a bit. Don't you know any of this? <laughs> It'd be a great thing to say to a maid on her first day. Right, okay, listen carefully. I want you to put the bits in the nooks, the bobs in the crannies. <laughs> I want all the dribs in this side of the room, all the drabs over there. <laughs> Separate all the odds from the ends. I need this place spick. People like that joke because they like to do the work for themselves. They think it's their joke. They go, and span, I did that, I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm more of a comedian than he. So yes, I really, I'm loving the walk. I think I'm working the walk, it's my new walk. There are lots of walks that we do in life. And we save them for special events. Obviously, this is saved from the Royal Variety Performance. It's my Royal Variety walk. There are other walks that you just bring out at different times. Like the shoe trying on walk. It's a weird walk. You never do this walk at any other time in your life. Until you're in the shoe shop. And they hand you one shoe, not two shoes. <laughs> Despite the fact that you're wearing two shoes, he's wearing two shoes, everyone in the world has two shoes, here's one shoe. And you accept that shoe. Yes, okay, one shoe. I'll imagine a world with the other shoe. And you think, well, I better see if it works. And you start walking around the shop. <laughs> I like it. I'll take two of these. <laughs> it's the shoe shop walk. My second favourite walk of all the walks, I think, is the, the walk you do when you're crossing the road and you think you've made a, a serious error and you might actually get hit by the car. Because you've ignored the green man and the red man. The green man? Who walks like the green man anyway? <laughs> you think I could make this regardless of the information I'm getting from the green man and the red man. And then you start crossing the road and you think, whoops, and you just hurry up just a little bit. So not bad. <laughs> But my favourite walk of all the walks is the walk you do when you're going through the metal detecting arch in the airport. It's a lovely moment. It's just you and the arch and on the other side the man who will feel your body if he hears the beep. And he looks at you as if to say, as soon as that goes beep, my friend, you're completely mine. <laughs> and then you walk through the arch in a way that you've never previously walked. It's my favourite walk. <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Bravo, thank you. Thank you.